Yeah, voice actor, voice talent, voice artist, um, 20 years of law enforcement. Now I've certainly been called worst. So you call me whatever you want. <laughs> voice yeah. talent. Now, now you're getting voice all talent. fancy on us with that. Voice talent Vo- versus voice athlete. How about that? Are you a voice athlete? Ooh, I kind of like that. That may stick, Paul. <laughs> that may stick. Yep. Voice athlete. Now I'm going to have to change all my website and and my <laughs> Instagram and all that good stuff, but voice athlete. That's good. So I I'm gonna I'm gonna throw out I'm gonna throw out a lot of stuff. Majority of it <laughs> won't stick, but every now and again you cook them noodles perfectly and one of them sticks. You get lucky as we like. Well, you got say. lucky right off the bat. <laughs> but look, you, you don't get getting lucky early is a good thing. That's that's how, that that's good. typically how you get your wife to fall in love with you, is by getting lucky early. <laughs> Your words, but I'll take, I'll take it. <laughs> oh, All right, Blitzky, so tell us, dude. So a voice, a voice athlete, a voice actor, all that good stuff. How do you get into that profession? And so, all right, let's start here. What kind of voice acting do you do? Uh, do you have a specific niche that you work in? And I'm going to ask that because... I'm assuming that there are different niches and different avenues that you can go. So which one do you play in? Which, which little playground are you in, in the voice acting world? That's a, it's a great question. And it's, and it's, that's where I was going to go is there are so many niches in voice acting. Um, I, I typically find myself wherever my um, agent, whatever he sends me or she sends me. Um, But, but, but I, I guess typically I do a lot of, um, car ads on our TV car ads. There's a local out of New Bern, uh, sell a Ford, no plugs, but I, I've been doing a lot of their, um, TV ads for, for the last year or so. Um, mm-hmm. I find myself doing a lot of e-learning. Um, I've done a couple, I've done a Geico commercial, as you know, um, last year, um, I was the voice and I think I still am of their online web, um, animations, hmm. um, for Geico. Um, you're not the lizard bit. voice. You're, you're um, the, the, not the, yet. Now I will fight the lizard. I'm not going to, or the gecko. I will, <laughs> I will say I will fight him for that job because uh, he gets paid a lot. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, great question with the niches, but uh, I, I, I'll do a little bit of everything. How about that? You, you know, I don't an agent. Th- and, and, and I say this too. from an aspect of, I, I know you from the law enforcement world as a buddy, you know, as a friend, and you say you have an agent and, and that kind of lends back towards to the voice athlete. You have an agent. What it's, is, is, is it, is it that lucrative or is it that hard to do without an agent? Why an agent is that? I, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm just trying to figure this out because you hear an agent and you think, well, you're making some big money. Or maybe that's the only way you can make a little bit of money is with an agent. Yeah. You know, ha- having an agent, and it sounds great. You know, it does. It sounds like a voice athlete. And you know, all athletes have agents, all good ones. Um, having an agent is nothing more than another tool on your belt to to get towards the money and to get towards mm. the jobs, the gigs, the sessions. Um, I've got two agents. I've got one in L.A., that just kind of focuses on stuff that's out of L.A., which is, you can, as you can imagine, a lot of... Uh, um, stuff potentially comes out of LA. My other agents out of uh, Dallas, um, which surprisingly, so there, there's some there's some some good stuff that comes out of that, that area. Um, Atlanta, New York, there are other hubs, but those are my two um, only agents, and and no one I can't be represented by anyone else. So I'm kind of locked into them. I don't that, I don't know if they're going to listen or not, but uh, talent agents, <laughs> I'm sure they won't. They're probably sleeping or doing other important stuff, but talent agents are really nothing more than just another tool. Um, I get 95% of my stuff, if not more from direct marketing or, Mm. you know, just, just trying to get it myself, but it's, it sounds good. And and it is good. It it probably makes sense to have an agent, especially when you're working with these huge companies because they have ends, uh, you know, they got some connections just like any other agent. Uh, they're able to speak the lingo and the stuff that goes on. So it, it makes sense to have them. It's just, it's really weird to hear that. Uh, but you're an actor, right? You're an athlete. You're an actor. You're the, uh, in a, a, 
we'll call it, not the drunkard <laughs> AA. <laughs> no. <laughs> Well, I mean, tonight we might get drunk tonight. I don't know. I'm drinking I don't, some white claw scourges. Well, I've got my I got my bourbon. I don't go to classes, but <laughs> yeah. Look, speaking of bourbon, you got the speakeasy. Speaking got of speakeasy. bourbon and speaking of speaking, we got the speakeasy yes, at sir. the Blitzky household. Yes, and, sir. And we got a bourbon collection that is that's a rival of any bourbon collection that I personally know. Very, very proud and very uh, happy with that. Yes, uh, it's taken some time. Um, it's taken some effort, but uh, and we need to get you out here to the house, you and Sarah. But I know it's, uh, God, it's, it's been a while, man. But you know, as close as we think we live together, I'm damn near a long Virginia. ass way. I'm damn near in Virginia. Yeah, you need to pass tools and stuff to get to me. I mean, crazy. you know, we had the last episode we had Major Warren Green, my buddy, for I played football with my long snapper, was in studio. And yep. you and I briefly talked about it, sure and did. I was like, "Dude, if you want to drive down, that's fine, but we're gonna record, you know, <laughs> maybe a couple hours, so you'd be getting home at one o'clock because this it's an hour and forty five minute drive. This is your podcast, right? This <sighs> is your time to shine. This is your time to make me look good by bringing somebody on that's knowledgeable <laughs> about something that other people might be interested in or might sure. be looking to get into. Sure." Hey, how hard is it? Is is it hard to get into this? And I knew you. I knew you a long time ago, man. I didn't know you were, were you a voice actor then. What what was the? How did you get into this? And why? And how hard? I got three questions in a row. So if you can't remember them, I got them in my head. Well, I'm gonna. I, I guess I'll I'll tell you my quick. I say quick, and everyone that knows me knows nothing is ever quick that I say. But um, I'll give you kind of a quick rundown of how I got into it. If that's if that's cool. Exactly. It's your podcast. That'll I'm answer. just here to ask Oprah questions and be handsome. <laughs> uh, much better looking than Oprah, but um, <laughs> basically. <laughs> the nicest thing anybody so, said to me in weeks. Just to, don't forget that. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, I've been in law enforcement 20 years. Uh, September of last year, September 22, I gave it up. I, you know, hmm. I, I've, I've been in it for 20 years. I, I finally turned my stuff in. Um Back in high school, back in Connecticut in high school, um, I was kind of trying to figure out what path I wanted to go, where I wanted to go. I had no clue, as, I, as any normal high school kid does. They usually don't have a path. So up, up in Connecticut, there's a, a prestigious um, broadcasting school called Connecticut School of Broadcasting. Um, very, very um, hard to get into. Very, very expensive. Um, I always wanted to do, Not necessarily, I didn't know what voice acting was, never heard of it uh, up until recently um always wanted to be behind the scenes the camera guy or a producer it's just something you know kind of in that environment we uh, were close to new york city so we spend a lot of time there so i like that um end up going to connecticut school of broadcasting to do an audition now their audition is like a day-long thing you got to go through this whole process and do a radio uh, testing and, and on camera testing and, and all this stuff arduous process um couple weeks later i find out i get i get accepted and, and i'm excited because it's almost my you know end of high school well then the you know they we talk about financing and how much it's going to be and it was uh it's you know like fall off the chair expensive and at that time of course you know i couldn't afford it my parents couldn't afford it what's expensive do you remember the number <sighs> i don't i mean i just a round I, I, number. I, I, yes, I, I, in today's dollars. 20,000, 10,000. So I think Duke is 65 last time I checked a, a year or semester. It was probably in the tens, that 20s, thousands. I mean, I don't know. It was it was expensive. 16 for, years for, ago. You know, 20, almost yeah. 20 years ago. That's a long, yeah, that's a lot of money. <laughs> Definitely couldn't afford it. I mean, it wasn't even an option. So yeah. I, I I I forgot about it and and I went the law enforcement route. Mm. And I'm glad I did. But always in the background, I always, you know, it'd be, it'd be cool to do something like that. So what? fast. Yep. All right. So we got to back up a little bit. What, yeah. what made you want to do that? Like, what was the, what made you, what made you want to do it? How did you know that there was such thing as voice acting? Voice acting? Yeah. So if you have to fast forward though. So uh, honestly, I, I didn't know what voice acting was. I, and I take that back. I, um, everyone knows what voice acting, when I say this name, Don LaFontaine, was the inner world that kind of that the trailer voice and that's mm -hmm. kind of old mm -hmm. school that's not trendy anymore they you know don lafondain very famous for that and he made 
a very lucrative career um, by doing that. But that's kind of out of trend. Now it's kind of conversational. Um, mm -hmm. it just it's kind of funny how that works. But anyway, um, so I knew about Don LaFontaine. I saw a documentary on him probably in the mid 90s. So that's when I first, I guess, found out about voice acting, but I didn't even think about doing it because I never thought I had a good voice. Um, so fast forward a lot to COVID, just before COVID. Um, a girl I went to high school with up in Connecticut, she became pretty successful. She, When we graduated high school, she did go that broadcasting route and she got onto many of the um, radio stations, the local radio stations, the big ones. Um, KC 101, uh, PLR was a big one. Um, and she did that for probably 15 years. And then wow. she found voice acting. And you know, again, fast forward to COVID-ish time, she was doing a how to get into voiceover um, video se uh, session mm -hmm. or seminar. So I said, I haven't talked to Gina in a while. Gina Scarpa is, Scarpa is her name. I said, let me, let me do this. So, cause I figured I'd reconnect with an old friend and kind of, you know, see if it's for me. So I did this free seminar and, and just, you know, right away, I knew it was for me. I, I, I just, I, I just knew right away. So again, this is 2000, end of 2019, early 20 that I took that seminar and I hit, I literally clicked off that, excuse me, clicked off that video session and, um, uh, bought everything I needed to do it. And, and again, anyone who knows me knows I don't all in, I all in, baby. I, I am all in or no, that's it. And I, you know, spent a lot of money, but, um, I, I don't look back. I, you know, I've made, I've made, I don't make a lot of money doing it cause it is a side job, but uh -huh. I've made enough to, to pay for the stuff I've got. And, and that makes me happy. But anyway, hopefully that answered some of your questions, but that's how I got into it. <laughs> and you know, what is, do you just get into it and then, because, you know, looking at your profile that I have and the stuff that I've done, you have a, I think, Midwestern is kind of your your voice that you say that you have. Yeah, neutral. How do you, when you get in there, do the the teachers or the folks that are your, your mentors, are they guiding you into where your voice goes, into the niche that you're in? How do you get, how do you know what you need to, how you need to be talking and what you need to be talking about. Your voice, kind of your voice, your voice is going to kind of dictate some of the stuff that you do. Now there is, um, you know, like any profession or, or job or whatever art, you have to take classes and you have to study and, and all of that good stuff. So you can kind of tweak that, but you know, your voice is your voice. You, it's hard to really manipulate it. So what you're saying is I couldn't be like a hero sub sandwich New York uh, voice actor for, you know, whatever the sub sandwich hero, whatever they're called up in, in New York. I, I probably wouldn't be a good voice for that. Yeah, probably not. I'm not, I'm not a casting director, Paul, but, uh, yeah, I'm, I oh, probably, I probably director. Don't, I, you, you don't I, have to be nice. You're like, I, hell no, dude, you, there's no way in hell. Of course, I could be the anomaly and the New Yorkers are like, listen to this damn redneck talking about <laughs> sub sandwiches. They, they may be surprised when they actually see you in person and see you have all your teeth. I mean, I don't know. Uh, yeah, no, I, I'd probably pass on you, Paul, and I mean that with love. Um, and, and we call them grinders up north. And, and I've got story. I got a oh. story about that, but we call them grinders. <laughs> Look, a, a grinder is in at least down here in the Carolinas. A grinder is what you do after you get home from the club at two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> well, up north we eat them. I don't know. I mean, it's, it's kind of weird, but you know. It's, <laughs> but uh, getting back, so you, I, I, I took I derailed you on that one. I apologize. Look, um, we, we are here. We are here to go off into left field. I love it. I Jump love over it. the fence. Do a little bit of, you know, a little bit of fool around and shit talking, <laughs> and come back over and pull it back in. So we good, but I love it. That's, That's good. awesome. That's good. But yeah, voices. I mean, like I said, your, your, your own voice will primarily dictate what you do. Mm. Um, you can, of course, you know, I'm always studying. I'd say the biggest thing, and, and I want to go back to mentors in a minute. Um, but the, one of the most important things is actually, and this is funny. It sounds funny, but watching TV and I cut uh, Marissa and I cut the cord <sighs> six, seven years ago. So to, to watch a commercial, uh, we, we very, very rarely do it. And one of the first things my, one of my mentors told me is, uh, you know, are you watching commercials? 
Mm. And I'm like, God, we cut the cord. I don't have many commercials. He's like, well, you, you need to do something because if you're not watching commercials like now, current commercials, you're you're not going to you're not going to get it. So because mm -hmm. because that shows you the trend in and. and you know, you watch any commercial, local commercials, uh, major broadcast commercials, and I mentioned con uh, conversational. Um, most of the reads now are conversational. That's the trend. Mm -hmm. And again, it's going away from if you watched 80s, 90s, where it was the fast talker, it was the inner world, that kind of thing. Right. It's not like that now. Now it's kind of just real person to person. Hey, you know, conversational. So again, I'm, I, I have to start watching commercials. And that's kind of how I study. I, 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 how do they talk? How do they you know, what, what does the customer want? So that's important. I do that with podcasts. I listen to podcasts and, you know, cause I do this podcast, which is new. And then I've been a co-host of Bass and Brews, which is coming up on two years old. Congratulations. When I listen to podcasts, thank you. When I listen to podcasts, I'm, I'm kind of asking questions to both people, the host and the co-host or the, the guest. Mm -hmm. I'll ask questions like when when they'll start talking, I'll ask a question and I kind of practice that on the voice side. What what is it that you're looking for? What is it? Because the, I have a limited knowledge on audio, but you can do some really cool ass shit mm -hmm. <laughs> in the editing room. You know, what is it that is it the inflection up and down? Uh, the coaching, what is a, what is the voice coaching aspect of it? What are you practicing? Are you practicing breathing? Are you practicing inflection? I'm assuming it's those two and a lot of others, but what does it look like to listen and practice? Th those are the most important things, you know, cadence, uh, cadence is probably the most important. And again, that goes with that conversational. So it's, you know, the cadence, the speed of the, of the tone, the inflection is huge. How you end on, on things. Some clients, you know, I'll, I'll get in the booth. And all my, most of my stuff when I'm in the booth is, I take it back, 50% is I record it, I, f I send a file. Mm -hmm. The other 50%, if it's a like a commercial spot, I'm doing live studio to studio from Source mm. Connect. I don't know if you've heard of that. But oh, no shit. No, I haven't. But that's cool. So they're, they're listening to you and being like, all right, let's try it again. So it's kind of like I, being in the, in the commercial. It, well, it's literally being... So this is my, my sound studio, but it's literally when I go in there and connect via source connect it, I can, uh, what comes through my mic, I, I don't do yeah. any editing. I go through the mic, it goes to theirs and it could be in London. It'll go to mm -hmm. their studio and on their end, they're editing and mixing real time. It's amazing. Source connect. Uh -huh. um, so Sweet. yeah. Um, as far as, you know, cadence is, is big inflection. Um, I, those are probably the two of the biggest things, you know, when, when I watch a commercial, that's what I'm looking for. Cadence inflection. Um, it literally, Oh, that's what I was saying. So clients, you know, I'll be on the, uh, in the booth talking to, you know, I have clients talking to my ear and, mm -hmm. you know, we'll do one run and they're like, well, you know, on the next read, you know, can you try, you know, either speed it up or slow it down or, you know, whatever the direction is. But sometimes it's, you know, instead of ending on this and on that, you know, up or down and, and yeah, it's what the client wants, but cadence and, and inflection are the two big ones what are they so they've chosen you to do this this commercial are they like harping your ears it is it kind of the the tv or the movie side of what are you doing no this is what i want scott this is what i need this is what i want more more <laughs> or is it is it just them going hey dude um let's let's try it this time and then who, you know, what, what kind of feedback are you, are they screaming and hollering at you? Or is it pretty laid back kind of gig? All of the gigs that I've had like that are usually typically laid back. I don't think I've ever Have had been one. Cussed yet? Has somebody no, been like, no, and I'm surprised. I'm, I'm actually waiting for it. I'm surprised <laughs> that. Happened. Cause again, I'm used to it. My wife yells at me and screams at me all the time. <laughs> um, but no, no, it's, it's usually laid back. And, and, and Paul, by the time it gets to a, you know, by the time I get the gig, right it's gone through you know several people have auditioned for it mm -hmm. and the casting directors and and every the production and, and client have listened to the voice and they kind of know when they make those selections they kind of know what your voice is and and what you're going to give because you'll we audition you know that's how we get mm -hmm. that gig so we'll we'll do a, a quick excerpt or read of that of that gig um 
so they know. So typically by the time it gets to the production or the, um, the recording, there's not much direction because, you know, very rarely, but once in a while, they, and you'll deal with some clients that, or I've dealt with some clients that are kind of picky, mm-hmm. but, but again, Thanks at the end too. of the day, but at the end of the day, it's their product and you, know, you got to try yeah, to but hey, listen. You got to do what the hell they want. They pay in you to Absolutely. be the voice of them, right? Absolutely. So you have to, you have to do what you're going to do on that. Sure. What? I'm so intrigued by like how, how all of this works. <laughs> <You> know, <laughs> Me too. <because laughs> I've been in the podcast world uh, for a couple of years now and you hear this and we 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 talk to a lot of people that have really good audio, really great voices. Like we hear and do all this, mm-hmm. and so it's really intriguing to me that like how you know we we covered this. But I'm like, how you know can can I be a voice actor? Here's a good example. If y'all if y'all haven't heard of uh, Bass and Brews, go go check us out. And and this is the reason why leading to this conversation. Um. Saltside Jess is a good friend of ours. They have their own podcast, Peddler's Playbook. His wife, Yonce, she does all of their commercials. And her and they she's Saltside Jess because they're saltwater kayak fishing podcast. Anyway, she did our intro. I'm like, oh my God, this is awesome. We've had people at the end of our episode, two hours after, you know, two hours of recording at the end of the episode, they go, Who did your intro? And because she just has one of those those soothing, draw you in voices, and so the, the the point I'm trying to make in this long ass dialogue is, if I wanted to get started into being a voice athlete, the LeBron James, I love the it. voicing of commercials, where would I start? Uh, coaching, coaching, and I'm going to get to that mentors thing because that's important okay. to me. Co- but coaching, um, classes, acting class, regular um, acting classes are huge. Um, it sounds kind of yeah. silly, but it's it, yeah, regular acting classes, classes on um, to just anything, just like anything. Knowledge is power. Um, anyone, I don't want to say anyone. Anyone can do anything they want to do. Blah blah blah, but you know a- anyone could do voice acting, and but but it's honestly it's. I'm going to be an astronaut. <laughs> it's next what, week, so just you, go. we, you, you, you got go. the ass part down. Just get, if you could do the tronaut. Wow! Holy good. shit! <laughs> wow! Zing! Um. Hey-o. Anyway, hey-o. hold on, hold on, hold on. I got to give you one of these for that. You you put me in That's my. That's what place. I like. That's what I like. <laughs> <laughs> truthfully truthfully anyone could be an, any, anyone could be a voice actor it's it's um but it's not for the faint and heart faint of heart and i and i mean that because i'll be honest out of and i do this part time i don't do this full time but I, I would say out of i don't know i'm going to throw a number out there and it's probably completely wrong but out of you know 90 auditions 95 auditions out of 100 auditions 95 of them are no's you know you get oh, passed up you shit. i mean it's I, I, I'm, I'm 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 being honest there's a you've got to learn to have thick skin you've got to learn how to hear and accept no and take that and move on and make yourself better um it because you know you know I've, you can be the best voice actor right very popular very um whatever, a great voice actor, but whatever, if that client's not looking for that specific voice at that time, it doesn't mean you suck. It doesn't mean you're a bad voice actor. It just means that it's not what they're looking for. Um, yeah. I, I learned that a long time ago. Don't, don't take it personally. It's, it's just for that, that product. They weren't looking for that voice. There's so many different is, voices. Is there a LeBron James of the voice acting? Is there, is there the, let me, let me rephrase that. Is mm-hmm. there a Michael Jordan? That's still mm. alive today and and competing, being an athlete in the voice world. Like, are there big names that are in the voice world that the rest of us know who they are because we hear them, but we don't know who they are? Sure, sure. Um, and I'm gonna I'll I'll, I'll bring it back to my mentors because they're two big ones. Um, uh, Roger Leopardi is uh, the voice of tra- uh, Tractor Supply. 
I know you know Tractor okay. Supply. So anytime mm-hmm. you hear a major broadcast, any commercial, no, I'm country as hell, even though I got all my teeth. So I know Tractor that's, Supply. That's Roger. That's Roger Leopardi. He is my first. He's one of my first mentors, and he has taken me under his wing, and has uh, you know we do we were doing last year we were doing monthly. He does a monthly video thing, and he kind of will mm-hmm. have like. 20 people on there and it's just 20 different voice actors and it's it's so cool because we'll be on a video are y'all, soon compete, are y'all like voice acting against each other be like hey this is scott <laughs> bill <laughs> no it's <laughs> not, not not so much that but Ro- you know roger will lead the thing and and <laughs> he's a producer as well a okay. very very popular guy but um he <laughs> he uh he'll kind of lead the thing so it, basically it'll it, it like one night it'll be commercial we'll do a commercial we'll do a, the next night will be a promo um mm. promo is like that tv stuff you know um but yeah no it's it, there'll be 20 people on it usually on each session and, and we just go through the through 20 people and we'll give our, our just a quick read and then he'll give us feedback and and it's it's just an awesome way to a couple things you're connecting you're getting that um you're keeping yourself consistent um you know you're always always learning new trends and and just a bunch of stuff but it's good stuff mm-hmm. That's Roger. So Roger's out of Florida. He's the voice of Tractor Supply. He's been doing it for years. He's also, I mean, he started in California. He's he's a big time guy. Um, he also got me connected to uh, Dean Panero, who is a uh, Panera, who is a big time talent agent in L.A. Beverly Hills. So that's that's hmm. my L.A. talent agent. There you go. Got, got me connected with that. So that was big. Dollar, and, dollar and, bills. Just like anything, it's all about connections. It's about uh-huh. making the right connections. And Roger's been tremendous with me. And, and so is Dean. Um, moving, and this is kind of weird, but so he's Tractor Supply. Then my other mentor out of Jersey is Dan Wright. Now, Dan is the voice of um, Ace Hardware. Has been for many years. He's also oh, the voice. Sh- he's also the voice of NHL now. Okay. I mean, yeah, and just... And they he goes by gravel throat because he's got that, and I guess maybe I do a little bit, but he's got that kind of gravelly, a little lower register voice. But he's he's been tremendous, and, and uh-huh. you know I can call him up, I can call either of these guys up on a, 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 any time of the day and say, hey, listen, you know I'm I'm having a problem with my recording stuff, or I'm having a problem with this read, and uh, you know we'll do a quick video session and they'll just guide me through it. So I mean it's it's tremendous to have that that um, talent and, and mentor. Um, so that's pretty cool. You know, that's interesting to me that you get a script or, as you call it, a read. I don't know. I don't know the vernacular for the voice copy. I don't know the Mm -hmm. vernacular for voice athletes, just like I didn't know, you know, all the vernacular for (laughs) Warren's episode flying Apache helicopters last week. (laughs) (laughs) So it is very interesting to me that you get hung up. And you gotta call somebody to be like, hey, I'm reading this this line, this sentence, and the shit don't sound right. What am I doing? And they're like, Oh, well, this is what you sound like, but this is what you need to sound like. Does is that happen? Like, is yeah. that real life? Absolutely. I can tell you when I first when I first started, again, I didn't know what voice acting was really. Um, but I I when I first got into it. I was told, yeah, you got a great voice, blah, blah, blah. You got better, better voice for radio than, than TV, obviously. Well, you know, yeah. we're, we're in mean, that, your we're voice in is great. Now, face, not never, so much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why. Look, if y'all want to um, go check out what Mr. Blitzky looks like, you can find this on YouTube, probably. It depends on how much editing I got to do. But he, you know, he's, he's, he ain't ugly, but he ain't pretty either. <laughs> I appreciate that. It was very nice of you to say. If he'd grow his beard out, he'd be way more handsome. Yeah, I know. Um, All right, back to your story. I don't remember what I was saying. Remind me. Uh, You were talking about uh, shit. I forgot now. (laughs) (laughs) Gotta stop drinking. Jeez, I started at noon. Look, I told you before this was your podcast, man. This is your podcast. I'm here to ask you. Know I'm not. I'm not here to myself. remember what you couldn't remember. Jesus, I forget. <laughs> oh man, let me take another drink. Maybe I'll remember. Um, oh yes, absolutely. So yes, does, does it happen? <laughs> so my when I first got into it, I always I I remember Don Lafontaine that in a world or or kind of the broadcast radio station. Um, they call the him zany drops. voice. Hey, zany, welcome. Yeah. 
Exactly. So they had to say, listen, you got to slow that shit down. This ain't in 1980. So people want to talk to you like you're talking to them right now on the phone or across the table, right? And believe it or not, for me, and it is still hard for me to do. It is hard. and, And what it is is I'm fine. We can talk like this. But I swear when I go into this damn booth and I get in front of that mic, it's like when I put my police uniform on and Marissa always told me that she's like, you know, you become a retard when you put your police uniform on you. Not, not in that. And I hate to say that word. That's not a good word, but she's like, you become an asshole, and yeah, I, there you go. but it's like, you know, you're, you get in a zone and I know you did it, but you, you put that on and you have to get into that zone because you're going on a, a mission really. What does it look like when you get a copy and start to go into booth to read? I usually, I start with an ice bath, you know, we're voice athletes. So oh, I usually start okay. with an, a voice okay. bath. Um, I'll down a couple of Gatorades with Jägermeister and then at least three. And then I rush into here uh, and I usually have um, cheering playing when I go uh, in there. High fives. I, and stuff. Look, we're going to no, I'm quit. I'm selling my business yeah. and me and you, if, if this is how you get ready to read a copy, yeah. I'm expect. selling my business and we're doing this shit. We will yeah. do. I got a microphone. Yeah. I've got a mixing yeah. board. Paul, if I was to tell you what I did to, to, to get ready, I mean, you, you'd fall asleep and probably fall off your chair. It literally, and, and cold I might still fall off my chair. Even though I know you're being facetious. <laughs> That's a big word. That's a big word. No, look, my second favorite word is facetious. I use it my a lot. My first favorite word is plethora. I use them both a lot. Ask I know. Yeah. 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 You use, you use, I use plethora facetious plethora a lot. Time. I use plethora a lot. You're That's facetiously, <laughs> you're, you're pl- pl- plethorally facetious. Golly, it's a mouthful. That is a my mouthful. Country ass, my country ass, there's too many vowels in there. My country ass can't get all them vowels out. So I, I, I don't have a good memory, but I remember this. So reading, so I, I, I prep myself, and this is this is part of, I'm going to give a, a big secret um, for voice acting. Cold reads are good right? And they call a cold read is if you never even looked at it, you know, you look at that read, that's the most natural response that you're going to get, right? So when we do an audition, very rarely will I look at it and study it and kind of, I mean, it's not like uh, I'm going to be on Seinfeld, you know, it's, I'm doing a commercial. This is, you know, they they give you a little bit of direction, um, you know, upbeat, you know, kind of modern style. And then I just read it, whatever comes out natural. And that's what they're looking for. They don't want you to try to be something you're not, unless it's something crazy, you know? Right, right. It, if but, it's not some kind of zany radio voice commercial, mm-hmm. they're looking for you to be just yourself. regular asshole Scott Bilski that your neighbors would listen to when you read it, which makes sense, right? It, Nowadays, it especially with social media, authenticity mm-hmm. is huge. And, but, and we see that with social media because mm-hmm. a lot of the content on YouTube and Instagram specifically used to be kind of uh, very edited, very perfect, yeah. right? Yeah. And now the content, and let's just throw Instagram off, it's YouTube. YouTube used to be, they wanted those longer videos with mm-hmm. the, the editing, very professional, mm-hmm. cut right. And now they're looking for... The ticky tack, the yeah. the you know the shorts. Yep, they want that raw, authentic. This is who I am right now. Look, and I'm assuming that the people doing these commercials do a lot of studying from the little bit that I know, and they know who they're talking to, and they know what those people want to hear. Hundred percent. Yeah, there's there, there's so much time spent in the you know the marketing on the marketing aspect and marketing side and and research and yeah they know exactly who their audience is. They, you know with all these uh, you know Google Analytics and stuff. That's that yeah. There's a lot of time put into that. So they know their market. And they know who they're talking to and trying to reach. Whether it be you know the the, the five to fifteen year olds or twenty to th- whatever. I mean they they know all that and that all comes into play with it with uh, with reads and stuff. Are they giving you? a bunch of lines to read and then they choose or are they giving you this is these are the two lines the two sentences it, this is what you, we need you to do like dep- uh, is it short is it long is it an intermix like how does what is what does the read the copy look like completely depends on the project so i mean there are um well it depends on the project depends on the client so it, it could be there's sh- uh, short form projects 
and there's long form projects and there's kind of in between a long form project would be an, an audio book, which, which I have done in the past. And unless um, they're going to send me a limo and pay me millions, I'm not doing any more because they suck. It's a lot of editing. <laughs> That's the only reason I bought you on here was to talk about audio books, but I thought you liked, all, I thought you liked me, Paul. I, th I thought you really wanted to talk to me, but now it's don't, audio. Don't be a dream killer now. <laughs> Finish what you were talking about. Then we'll talk about, you know, yes. some other important aspects of this. But Absolutely. we're going to talk about audio books. And if you're a dream killer, I I'm, I'm going to drive up to the speakeasy. I'm going to drink all your bourbon uh, and I'm going to take your chickens. Audio. <laughs> my neighbor's chicken. We've got goats. But audio books are um, Audio books are great. That's what I meant. No, to no, tell you. don't not now, not now. We're coming back to audio books. All right, Long talking form. about the when you get the copy, yes. when when they want you to read, what does that look like? All depends. So if it's, you know, most clients just if it's a long project, short project, whatever. Most clients for an audition or a, for the the read audition, it's just a very short snippet. Um, most po people just kind of want to, maybe it's a paragraph just to get your inflections, mm. your tone and, and your, your whatever. Now, when I audition or when anyone usually auditions, they'll give a couple different reads. So if my kind of standard is usually two reads, um, two, two different, you know, different styles of reads. Cause you never know exactly, you know, I'll, I'll, the first read will be the direction that they give me that I think I'm interpreting. Mm -hmm. And then the second one will be kind of a free for all what I think it should be or not what it should be, what I think it, I envision. And sometimes they like one of the two, sometimes they hate them and 95% never, never call me back, but <laughs> maybe I should change my thinking, huh? <clears throat> not a very smart man, Paul. Um, maybe but, you just need, maybe you're reading the wrong <laughs> copies. I could be that certainly that could be, that could be a part of it. Look, but man, it, he's in, he's in Texas and he got you reading shit for some Texas barbecue with your, Connecticutian or however whatever y'all are called. That is the, that's the With, official term. No, he's not got matter. you down there in Texas talking about some barbecue subs, and you're like, "These, uh, I, I'm going to ruin it, but we're going to make a attempt at a joke here, y'all." This is Blitzky talking about, "Oh, your barbecue uh, heroes here at blah 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 barbecue," and people are like, "Who the Yankee?" Yeah. I hear that a lot. Every once a day, I'll hear that. Who the fuck is this Yankee? <laughs> don't go back and don't don't bring your family. That's I hear that. I hear that. You know, it's my welcome. Twenty years in the in the in the south, and and that's my welcome every day. So people really are. They really can be assholes to voice actors. That shit's for real. Well, not necessarily. I'm not even talking the voice acting world. I'm talking about my damn regular. Day to day operations, <laughs> leaving the oh, house sometimes. You, like, look, my neighbor will say, "Hey, asshole, go, back, go back north, you fucking jag off." <laughs> you know? no, but I'm, I'm in the house, and my wife get mad at me. She's like, "You know what? You ain't from here. Go back north, Yankee." <laughs> Marissa, y'all, Marissa's a baller. Well, she's from the she's from the far south. Mm -hmm. Barbados. Barbados. Speaking of, we'll be there in two weeks. Oh shit! Just a little excited. I'll try to hold back, but um, I hijacked it again. I don't even know where the hell we were going. Apologies. We, you know, it it, it really doesn't Great. matter because the voice act. See, this is voice act. Golly, I want to be a voice actor. Could, are there voice acting teams? Like athlete, like like uh, like a team. yeah, like me and you, like sure. doubles tennis. Are there voice acting doubles? Could we be a voice act? voice acting athletic team i think tennis is getting old and dated i think it's pickleball now i think pickleball could we do a pickleball yeah like but a, pickleball ain't like bringing in tens of millions of viewers on the it ESPN. will be though. it will be it will be. it's the okay, next yeah so so anyway. some people thought that about bass fishing back in the early 2000s <laughs> and um bass fishing is boring as hell and nobody wants to watch that shit on tv not even people that love the bass fish and i know that what? for a fact Listen, I am not a fisherman. I have no fucking angler. patience for it. I'm angler. not an angler. There you oh, go. All right. There you go. All right. I, I got to come up with something snappy like you came up with me, but dangler. <laughs> we'll call you a dangler. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Dangling participle. I know I know nothing about fishing. I, I, I It's just not for me. But I do know John Vance. John Dan. What's his name? John Vance? <laughs> you the, do the not guy? know him because his name is Bill Dance. And you Bill Dance. Look, this is. Cut it off. We're hey, cut. We're done. Hey, hold on. <laughs> you got closer to a fishing star slash celebrity 
than I could have ever guessed in a million years a voice athlete. <laughs> I would have never even I would have never even got close to the voice athlete thing. <laughs> Anyway, Bill, whatever his name is, dance. Bill, funny. dance. He's a funny mf'er. You got dance right. That's pretty. You dance, got part of it right. Nance, yeah. Dance. D a n c e. Hey, Bill. How do you say? All right. Th this show, nothing in this show is scripted at all. Everything is come as you go, go as you come. Because obviously, if people listening can't tell. So, you know, we just hear conversate. The pronunciation of words how important is it and this is a big one right how do you say the word o i l it's a good one i would say oil okay and i say oil. oil 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 and so i don't i say when somebody says what do you want to drink i'm like give me a crown roll <laughs> how is how does would would when you and I guess so. I guess, I guess I'm jumping ahead, right? I'm I'm not no. thinking about the the uh, the part where you actually um, audition, and they're like, "This did this this asshole just say oh, There ain't no damn way in hell. We are having him on the Chevrolet commercial talking about oil changes. <laughs> and <laughs> you know, and unless it, unless it's a, a Chevrolet commercial in you know South Carolina, North, North Kakalaki, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's there's regions for everything. Um, <laughs> so what you're saying? Wh I mean, I don't even know where the hell I'm going with this. I'm just curious because I, I assume that you have to have an enunciation and a vernacular uh, that is well rounded. And if there are those particular words like you know the 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 oil and the roll, like I say all of those words the same. And it would probably kick me out of a, a California type commercial. Uh, no doubt, no doubt. And I'm just being truthful. So yeah, I, I, you know, watch the news. That's a good example. Watch the news, and no matter where they are, typically, and they'll have a little southern draw in the south, but typically, everything's very enunciated, right? I mean, we know that it's it's kind <laughs> of like that standard newscaster, um, neutral um, kind I of thing. You. So you kind of have to be like that. Now, of course, sometimes you just can't change your voice and you will lose out on roles that are in New England. If you're going to be, a, um, you know, if you're doing a Boston, they want a Boston accent, you know, Paul, you're not going to get it. I'm just going to here to tell you. Well, and, nor would Boston I. an accent yeah. probably goes like my Canadian accent. They all end up sounding uh, really bad Australian. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. That's an interesting. It's weird, man. It's weird. That's, that's Every time I try to any accent that I try to make, even when somebody, you know, like when I'm trying to be extra country with my yeah. accent, ends up being Australian. Throw up. Maybe there's something about sure. Australia we need to talk about. We need to dive into that later. But Look, I would uh, <laughs> love to go to Australia. I would love to live in Australia. I mean, I, you know, take Marissa because to. that's her dream. And I have no desire other than fighting a kangaroo i have no desire to go to australia honestly i just right. there's nothing there that, that i like seriously all right hold on fighting a kangaroo i'd love what, to fight a kangaroo. why what, what why would you like to fight what the fuck did the kangaroo do to you in the connecticut listen. zoo back I'm in not... 1994 when you were 12 years old that listen you i'm not fight? saying i'm not saying i'd heard it on the like, on the contrary, I'd get hurt, but I just, they're, they're cool. And I am an animal lover. All right. They're cool animals. They're, they intrigue me, but I, you know, they're, 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 um, badasses. Kangaroos are bad. I'll kick you in the nuts, you know? And I just, I think it'd be fun to, to scrap with one. I don't know. Maybe. Mm. Let's get your animal lover, but you want to beat up a poor. I didn't say beat up. Kangaroo. I just want to fight it. Not beat up. That's harsh. If I had a thousand dollars to bet on you or a kangaroo, would I bet it on you or the kangaroo? Kangaroo. You yeah, think so? Kangaroo. Yeah, you should. Are are, are y'all bare fisting it or do you have gloves on? Bare bare fisting. And by bare, bare fisting, I mean I have a PBR in one hand and my other hand free. Um. Right. Does is biting allowed? 
Yes, it's 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 MMA. So biting, kicking. So it's MMA minus the rules. Well, because think about it, a kangaroo. You tell a kangaroo, listen, no biting, <laughs> no kicking in the balls. What's he going to say? He's going to kick you in the balls. So it's all know. it's all anything goes. What the kangaroo it's sound like? I don't know. Can't say. I've never been to Austria. Don't care to go there. So I don't know. <laughs> but it's just one of those places. There's so kangaroos ain't in Austria. They're in Australia. Austria is Austria. Is, that, is a, that is a that is a look, yeah, y'all. He is a voice athlete slash. <laughs> Actor, he is not, not geographer. A geographer. <laughs> <laughs> and kids, and, you can fail math and geography and still be a voice actor. That's what I'm here to tell you. Look, the only thing you gotta have to be a voice actor is be able to read. You get well. That's the easy. That's the easy thing to say. So going. Well, you ain't way gotta back, do no math. No, there is no math. Well, except when I send my invoices. But there are programs that that can do that for you. True. True. All you have to do is be able to read and talk. No, no, it's, it's, it's definitely, that's what, that's what a lot of people think. Anyone could do voice again if they, I'm, I'm all right. I'm taking this. This is when people say this is no offense to you, they, they're, they're going to be offensive. So I don't say that shit. Yeah. I'm going to tell you when, when I started, all right. When I started seeing you talk about being a voice actor, which is a, a couple of years ago, you started putting mm-hmm. it out on Facebook a lot. COVID, 2020. Mm-hmm. And I would I would look at your post and I would look at your stuff and I'm like, oh yeah, it's just fucking Blitzky, you know? I mean, pff, okay. And yeah, he's reading the script. Sounds good. Sounds cool. And then my wife, Sarah, the beardist, yeah. she was like, have you seen uh, Scott Bilsky's, uh, you know, voice thing whatever she said and i'm like yeah she's like it's really good i didn't know he he could do that it's really good and i'm like Aww. i mean <laughs> for real and so i'm thinking you know i come from you as somebody that's kind of been in the trenches right we we have a bond we have a brotherhood um we we've just done some shit that it and yeah absolutely outside of being just friends and my wife, on the other hand, is in, and obviously also too, when you're in law enforcement, mm-hmm. picking on your friends and degrading them is kind of, it's, it's the norm. You know, that's how expected. you show love. That's expected. how you show love. But anyway, the, you know, when she said that, it really did make me take a step back and, and, and start to listen to it. But I still, and I'm some, this comes from somebody who, I do these podcasts and I really, I don't listen to a lot of, but I, I analyze when I talk, how, how I talk. Right. So a lot of people have the ums, Mm -hmm. the filler words. Yep. And that's something a lot of people can't come through and it comes down to, they don't know what to say next. Yep. So instead of pausing, they say, um, 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 huh. I don't have that problem. I'm very conscientious about that. Yeah. The point I'm trying to make is I ain't going to keep rambling on this shit. But the point I'm trying to make is, like, to me, being able to do the voice acting seems as simple as sitting here with this piece of paper, this notepad, with Mm -hmm. Crusher Raleigh having Scott Bilsky read, we say cash on trash. You know, that it's that simple. But you're saying it's not. You're saying there's more into it than that. Absolutely. I mean, if it was that easy, Paul, anyone could, anyone can do it, but if it was that easy, everyone would be doing it. And they're, you know, they're, they're, which, you know, COVID and enter me and I'm very, I hate to say something good came out of COVID, but some things have, um, and this is one of them. So, you know, when COVID happened and people were starting to work more from home and, and had a little bit more flexibility and freedom, um, there was a huge, huge influx in, in voice acting, um, hmm people coming out and, and wanting to voice act because now they can do it at it, studio do it from down. home. That's why you, you couldn't buy home. microphones it's, for a year exactly. and a half because yeah, sure everybody is. was podcasting and zooming and Ab- doing absolutely. all that. Absolutely. So there's a huge influx because a lot of people thought they can voice act. And, and I'm, and I don't say that in a bad way, but there are so many people that think they can voice act because they think it's literally just reading a script and right. it's you know those guys are going to fail and girls are going to fail because it's it's so much more 
And, and when I say more, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot of money with equipment. Mm. I'm not saying you have to have the best equipment. You don't, um, you have, your voice is going to be your equipment, but you know, you, you do have to good, have decent equipment. You've got to put time into it. Um, direct marketing is huge. So if you don't have time to spend, and I don't as much as I would like to, but if you don't have a lot of time to direct market and make uh, cold calls and cold calls, um, you're not going to succeed. Hold on, hold on, time out, time out. Don't forget your, don't forget this spot because I know I'm going <laughs> to mess it up for you because both of us are going to. But you were like, you said cold calls and you didn't like how it cold. sounded. So cold. then you were like, cold calls. <laughs> You stopped yourself it's in the fun. middle of an interview sh- sure because did. you didn't like how cold call sound is because you I'm I'm assuming you thought you said it too fast and didn't enunciate well. So you're like cold calls. To- cold calls. You it's exactly it. yourself. It's exactly it. So you remember you, you know, do muscle that memory. in front of your wife? <laughs> no, I don't. I, I, okay. Yeah, so this is only when you're in front of a microphone. No, I, I may. I don't know. But you muscle memory. So you know, fi- I think of firearms and and you know, you muscle, oh, yeah. what we're there trained for. Same thing with this. So you know, when when you're doing, uh, you know, this every day, um, and it's funny that I didn't insert a snap because usually when I'm, and I don't know if you do that. No, honestly, two snaps up in a Z formation usually. But no, when I'm recording, <laughs> when I'm recording, a lot of people do um, either have a clicker or a snap because when you're editing or clap. Well, yeah, if you, if you make a mistake, it's just, especially in long form, like an audio book, if you're, um, if you're going through and you're uh, an hour into it and you, you know, you make it cold call that way, when you go back, you can see the spike in the, in the editing and you can go back and it's just easier yeah, to find clap. a mistake. But, I was so uh, excited that I was having somebody on this podcast who was a professional recorder. Like, you know, top of the line. Don't give me a big you, head. If ball. you go look at his social media stuff, microphones, screens, editing equipment, and then his ass is sitting two feet outside the actual studio using a cheap ass microphone like I got <laughs> with some cheap ass headphones. I mean, straight up disrespecting the hell out of this podcast that gets no. 18 listeners a, a, a week. 19 marissa's listening <laughs> we're gonna add one thanks marissa she better sell it to all her goat friends and then we can get at least 40 to 50 with the goat people uh, now now we're talking there now we go talking. there and we i go. forgot what i was saying before so thank you paul well you know quit saying that because now you're making me sound like a really bad host you are the best pod literally you are the best podcast host that has that i have ever been on uh, well, have, how show. many have you been on two <laughs> Is this the second one or the third one? The second. Okay. Well, you know, but I truly uh, mean that. You are the best. Well, 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 well thank you. I appreciate that. The other yeah. person, I hope you're listening because uh, Blitzky said you suck and you should probably end your podcast. <laughs> and, and life. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I just, I swear I'm kidding. Eugene, I love you and you know that if you're listening. I know you. His know. name's Eugene. You, not you, Eugene from The Walking Dead, right? No, Eugene actually got me an IMD. Being credit, so I can't. Oh I, shit! And he is a good dude. He had directed okay. a a little short, but anyway. Um, yeah. All right. Yeah. Back back to voice acting. Again, intrigues the shit out of me. I appreciate that. And it, it really does. And I never, I I knew, and I listened to people. You know, I I knew it was there, but I really I never cared, right? I never cared until you mm-hmm. started doing it, and I was like, I know somebody who's a voice athlete. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, that makes me feel a little bit special. Well, what the hell? So I start to think about it a little bit more. Yeah. Have you have you done movies? Have you have done I- any of that? Is that of is that a genre or a niche of yours that you've hey. done like these? Um, I'm trying to think of a voice like that. That is a niche that would be promo. So promo, and I have it actually on my, you can't see it here, but I've got a whiteboard. Um, promos is my goal for this year. Have not done any promos. Now promos, I equate promos are very good. So if you can get onto a, you know, NBC or one of those, if you can get on a regular promo roster. So it's got pro, in, in real quick. So is mm-hmm. a promo, like introducing the next, the show coming up. Correct. Right. Yeah, that's typically. Okay. I mean, there's. Okay. I'm sure there's some sub niches to that. Right. But, but just in general, when you're talking yep. about our promo, you're talking about like a, you know next 
Next, next on, on the view. On, you know, on the view. Know, the price is view. right. I use the view, but because I watch the view every day. I don't know. I, I I'm kidding. I don't. Um, Bo, I don't know, I don't know so why that when you you got when you're going to be facetious, you have to use less plethoras. That's of true. Facetious. Facetious. Um, you got to be careful with facetious because it's it's close to feces, and you don't want fe- facetious and feces. But no, when you together. country, when you country though, facetious. It sounds like a whole different way. You ain't ever a country person ain't ever gonna come across saying feces versus <laughs> facetious. Uh, promo that would be that'd be a good example of promo. So if you get on <laughs> if you can get onto a regular promo roster, um, it's a it's a great gig. The only thing is I equate promo stuff to CID detective. Mm-hmm. on call mm-hmm. because when you and this is true so if you if you get on a, a good promo roster nbc you're doing that stuff like they'll call you literally you know you got to remember i've got two clocks in here i'm looking up here one's la and one's new york but you know when you most of this promo stuff is either out of new york or california so mm-hmm. when you're doing that stuff and especially if it's out of california you know they'll call you three hours difference and it could be late at a night and hey, hey i need you to report record a spot so like kinda, right now like right now or a show right that's now. coming out in three months because they've got all the editing and all that stuff to do. And they're, they're seriously, Are so you that, ser- because they I'm record serious. when they record the show, it don't, it ain't like this podcast. They no. record on a Friday or Saturday. It comes mm-hmm. out on Monday. Yeah. So you're talking about, they call you up like, we need you right now. Blitzky. Mm-hmm. You're the man holler, help us. Yeah. And the, and the show's coming out six months from now. Yep. That oh, my, my buddy, shit. Dan Wright and Roger, they both, well, Roger, not so much. He's been into it for Eber- like, 20 years, uh, Siskel, um, Gene oh, Siskel. I thought it was Roger, Roger Ebert. It was Leopardi, but, um, <laughs> the, these guys that get these good gigs and it does make good money, but when they travel, they've got to bring a, f- a freaking second, you know, studio with them and, and in the Ooh. hotel they set up. Right. It's a whole thing. It's a whole thing. So this, this leads me into something for yes. serious that I meant to ask earlier. Editing. Obviously you're recording. Yes. What is, what do you do? Are you editing everything or is it dependent? And I'm, I'm assuming this is where the audio books come into play from what it sounded like earlier. Are you editing all your stuff or are you recording and sending them a file? Like, what does that look like? Because I'll tell you now, YouTube, fishing YouTube, huge market. Mm-hmm. And you know, I catch some really good fish and I'm articulate. I talk to myself a lot. Like I have some good content on the video that could go out to YouTube fishing, but I hate editing. I hate sitting down and looking at all that. I've tried to make it easier and it, it just hadn't worked. But that diatribe, the editing part, are you doing it? Or are they doing it? Is it case by case? Do you work that into your contract? What does that look like? Because that's got, that's the hardest thing there is about anything you're doing, podcasting, videoing, anything. The editing is the most time-consuming part of all of it. My first <laughs> gig, my first voice acting gig ever, I got hired by an author out of California. Have you heard of Fiverr? Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. People love it and hate it, but I, I, I was a brand-new voice athlete uh, recruit. And uh, I put out on Fiverr, and I got a, I, I got an author out of California. Um, was doing an audio book. It was a pretty cool audio book. I thought it was a cool project. He 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 didn't know he was hiring a, a brand new rookie, but <laughs> first gig ever. I sold it awesomely. I you did didn't tell him either. You was like, he, this is my first gig. Like, oh, of course <laughs> I didn't tell him. Of course I didn't. Tell him. Hell yeah. He was hey, thrilled. Hey, he was thrilled. Book never went anywhere. It went. He had some issues with it, but um, <laughs> but I did it, and he paid me, and and, uh, and I thank him for that. But uh, um, audiobooks are a, tr- I mean, if you think, I don't even know what the rate is as far as like time and, and effort and, and actual production, but it's for, an, I just say for an hour, um, an hour of vocal audiobook, it's probably quadruple in editing. Qua- I mean, at least, I mean, I mean day, days, weeks. And that's just for a new, this is me being new too. But But, all right. So the question though goes back to: Do you have to? Are you recording and 
in pro- are you producing, recording, okay. editing, sending out, or are you just recording? Or are there some companies that just want you to record? Again, this goes back to somebody that potentially thinks that, hey, you know, I'm, I have a good voice and people tell me I sound good and I want to be a voice athlete. Do they need to know how to edit or is there an avenue that they just record and send the damn file to the people and the people do all the magic? Or do you need to know how to edit or you ain't going to make it? You need to know how to edit or you're not going to make it. Bottom line, I would say 90, probably I love using fake made up ratios or or, uh, percentages, but I would say 97% of my uh, recordings are self-edited at self-edited the good, you know, the ones that are bringing in more money, typically they do all the stuff themselves, which is, it's Mm. kind of sounds weird. You know, the, the ones, the bigger projects are throwing more money at you and all you have to do is talk into a microphone in my booth. They do everything. Like we were talking about source connect. Um, I don't, that's an unpaid plug for them, but they are awesome. But typically when I'm doing those bigger gigs, um, all I literally, all I do is talk into the mic. They take care of everything edited on their end in real time um, and post, but the client makes it very easy and very straightforward when it's, when they provide the copy or whatever the script is, that's what you read. I mean, there's no fillers. Um, even when I do a a different read or my take on it, it, I don't add filler words unless it's unless they say, "Listen," because there are some copy that they'll be free with it. They're like, you know, kind of use your judgment and kind of add filler words. Then it's okay. But typically, if they you know give me a script, I try to do my best to read what's exactly on the script because they'll correct it. You know, because they they put time and effort and exactly they done marketed want. every single At, word in that script. I'm they sure. marketed the like, hell out of it. Yeah, they're like, why? You're you're probably looking at going, why is there a comma after this word? This makes no sense. Absolutely. I shouldn't be stopping. I should be continuing to talk. And Absolutely. they're like, no, no. This polls, yep. 99 people out of 4,000 are going to continue listening because of the polls. Well, you know, so it's, it's amazing. Yeah. Maybe you've seen this too. So I was in sales and some mm-hmm. some of the stuff I did got me in touch with some marketing people in fortune 100 companies. Sure. Some of the shit that these marketing people have, um, like mapped out is phenomenal. I'm sure it, you probably see that a lot. A little bit. Yeah. A little bit. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know where we're going with that, but completely off the topic. I think going back to the Here we second, go. You're fucking to the, up sec- the whole podcast, to the second, <laughs> no pressure to the, uh, um, with the ums and the ands and the filler and all, all that yeah. fluff crap, um, I, I think a, a a big part of that, and I hate to say this, is but that mill- the millennial kind of that new generation that's coming through, you're going to mm-hmm. see that a lot with them. So I think they honestly, and I hate to say that, but I think it's true. But they, I think they're going to struggle with 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 that. Um, you know, trying you're to get say they're sh- they're going to be shitty ass voice actors. Basically, that's what I'm saying. You're going to make and you're going to make big money in their 60s because the millennials are terrible. Yep. All right. So, so back to the kind of the main point, um, Mm -hmm. you don't really have a lot of fillers because you're not off the cuff. You're reading what they, what they've given you. Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. In the audio book, let's go back to audio books. Cause I, we we talked about it earlier, Mm -hmm. reference it earlier, reference it again. And then I'm very curious about this because I love audio books. Mm-hmm. I do a lot of driving, so I mm-hmm. can't read a lot. I'm, I'm sure. driving, so I listen to a lot of podcasts. I want to listen to audio books. We're doing audio books. Are you sitting there with the book in front of you, just reading word for word and flipping a page? Is that is that what it is? I, I typically have it in digital form, so the author will, or will send it to me in digital form. So I've got it up on a screen um, looking at it, but I mean, I have done it by, by pages. Uh, you know, you go at your own pace because I'm self, most of the time I'm self editing an audiobook, which again, that sucks. Mm. If you can get a gig where they're going to edit everything and you just literally talk in the mic, it's not so bad. It's still a lot of work. Um, you know, you read a book, you're reading a book and just straight reading a book. Okay. Out loud. So this is, this interests me. So, mm-hmm. 
because you get do you read the whole book mm -hmm. and send it and then the author's like i don't like how you said this or are we send this stuff in pieces like how do you know do you have a meeting before how do you know what the author wants when it comes to and and i'll i said this early and i'll say it again and we'll continue saying it if we keep talking mm -hmm. about it sure. but voice inflection is what makes people interesting is what makes a lot of podcasters and radio personalities who they are is because they can go up and down and talk yeah. and they can they can make people feel like they're in that conversation even though they're a thousand miles away listening to it on a radio yeah how do you get how do you how do you understand what the author wants in and how you're talking Typically, it's by direction. So typically, you know, you'll have some kind of meeting beforehand and you know, not in person because post COVID, nothing's in person. But yeah, typically, they'll give you a, a set of directions. And for audiobooks, I typically will do a phone call or a video session because I want to know exactly what they want because it's a lot of work to put in and it's a lot of, um, we, we call them pickups. So when, when you record any project and it goes to the client or goes to the production company, whoever is, is going to edit. And then they kick it back saying, hey, listen, you know, you said you misspelled or, you, you know, you mispronounced this word and you mispronounced this on page three and blah, 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 whatever. We call those pickups. So after you're done with the your original recording and it goes to the client or production, they'll say, listen, you know, go back and, and redo these few words. Um, now, that's what a small project when you when you talk about an audio book, which could be, you know, 800 pages to a thousand pages yeah. to. 80,000 words is kind of an average of a of decent sized book. Um, that becomes tedious, but so um, they will call you up and be like, Hey, you mispronounced oil. Oh, sure. On page 35 mm -hmm. sentence, you know, I don't know. They even number sentences, but page 35, there's a, there's oil in there. You mispronounce it. What do you do? Do you go back and just read that sentence or that like how and how the hell do you edit it in without it sounding cut up in the like it's this tough. is it's tough. Pickups are tough. Pickups and are you're tough. doing that yourself. You don't have a team mm -hmm. or a, a a a executive producer or whoever whatever the hell they're called mm -hmm. doing this for you. They call you up, say, Hey, these are the, the there's 10 words you mispronounce. In this book, this is page this, paragraph this, line this, and you have to go back and say that that sentence or that word and splice it back into the recording, and it can't sound like a, a robot. <laughs> this is what goes back to your um, skills. So, you know, if you're going to do audiobooks that you're going to have to self-edit, you have to know how to edit, and that is not that takes what. It's time for everybody yeah. listening. He said, what? I'm shaking my head. No, because fuck that. The only audio book I will ever audio is my own. And I ain't writing a book. So I ain't audio in one unless somebody wants me to talk like I talk now. But I damn sure ain't editing shit. Holy it's, hell. That's a fuck ton of work. All right. It is a lot of work. All right ton of work we've mm -hmm. talked about this it is a ton of work the editing stuff and you know what goes into the production part of it and the post-production how much are you getting paid like is this lucrative you said that you'll read mm -hmm. what'd you say eight thousand word books so let's say 500 pages that takes you reading editing sending the copy out the first draft out 40 hours probably i say a week okay yeah, a because week. i do again part-time it's not full-time so right all yeah, right so about a week. week so 40 hours what let's say that it works out perfectly no no edits they don't call you back so you mispronounce oh how much are you making and I know it, it varies. There's probably a lot of variables with this, who it is and this and that. But like in general, what are we making? Just just a general term on average. I've only done a few audiobooks, literally a few, maybe three, four. 
Um, all of them are larger projects and they're in the low 2000, 2,500. I mean, and when you think about it, 40 hours, yeah, that's, that's good money. It's a lot of work in this booth gets, you know, when you're standing here for three, four, five hours, it gets really hot. You know, you can't have a fan going because, you know, it's, it's a sound booth. Um, uh, look, you sound like me. We, we need to get on a weight loss program. So <laughs> you're not, you're not sweating in your, in your audio booth. I imagine that you're in your audio booth after like 10 minutes and you strip down to nothing but your jaws. Because I you're do. sweating, because you're overweight, and I know that if, if I was in the audio boot, I'd probably be down to my skivvies, nothing. I do all my, don't tell my talent agents, but I do all of my recordings nude. Um, oh, okay, nice. So yeah, yeah, no skivvies. Um, no, typically, <laughs> that's that's a lie. I, 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 well, crack. I, see, I, <laughs> I can see your face. I can tell you're telling the truth. I, I crack this door open quite a bit through takes, uh -huh. and, and that, that helps a lot, but... Um, all right. So, yeah, so awesome. that's the audio book side. I stay away from them. Yeah. I can tell you don't like them. And at this point in time, I don't like them and <laughs> but love to sure listen I'm to them. continue love to buy them because holy shit. It, it's it, wonderful. That's crazy that they'll call you up for that kind of stuff to redo. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Now, and, and just to, to be fair. So usually when, when you edit, you can edit however you want and record. I'll record the easiest way for audiobooks is by, you know, by chapter. So, you know, you do one chapter, one long chapter. So when you have to go back, it's, you know, you could pull up chapter five and it's not so hard. You don't have to go through a billion words, but it's still, it's a pain in the ass. Uh, it's, it's, but listen, there, there's, that is a niche that a lot of people and a lot of women for some mm -hmm. reason uh, get into that stuff. And that's great, but that's all they'll do. They'll just do audiobooks and, and more power to them. I mean, that's great. If that's what they want I would, do. you know, from my from my side i would love to read some of the books that i love i would mm -hmm. love to read them mm -hmm. but i just want to read them into a microphone and then get recorded and somebody else do the editing the the editing side so for the podcast for instance when i do have to edit and when i do edit i can tell that break and sometimes I get it really good. And I'm like, most people won't be able to tell. Yep. But other times, because I'm not using, I'm not using real editing equipment either. I'm, I'm using free shit. <laughs> so right. it, you know, whatever that, works for you. But it, there's always that break. I enjoy the pauses. I enjoy that, that conversational piece into it. That all that editing that goes into that to, I didn't think you did that. I, I really thought that as a voice athlete, as LeBron James of voice acting, you just sat behind a microphone. I I really, really thought that as a voice actor, you showed up, you read the script, you read whatever you need to do into a microphone that was recorded. And then at the most, you saved it and sent it to somebody who then did post editing or well, whatever it is. I'm going to, I'm going to say, and I can't speak for pre COVID ish because I got into it COVID time. So I, I'm going to say pre COVID. I think that was the norm. You'd go to a studio and, and there's a bunch, there's a couple in Raleigh that I go to. So there still are studios, but that is not the norm anymore. So I think it was the norm. I think you, you know, you get a gig or you get a session and you go to that studio and, you'd record talk into the mic and your sound people would take care of all that stuff. And then they, they'd send you the file and, and you'd send it away. Now COVID where everything was shut down, you know, we're in a world now where, you know, everything's remote. So you had to kind of, maybe I got in a good time. Maybe I didn't, I don't know, but now I, I have to know how to edit. So I guess it's a benefit. It sounds like people, even your, your old school guys, if they didn't have connections to help them edit, that if you didn't know how to edit something, you're losing out. Yeah, yeah, you're probably gonna miss out on some stuff since that's it. Uh, uh, you know, I, I didn't think it. I I really thought I I had in my mind that the Bojangles man did his Bojangles jingle, and well, closed up shop and went and started drinking beer at eleven o'clock. 
I was like, hell yeah. I'm fairly confident for the Bojangles, for the McDonald's, those guys are going to a studio or they're doing it in their own studio, but they're they're not editing that stuff. You know, anything they're, that's they're just they're they're famous. They're, like the, well, they really are the the LeBron not, James. Not necessarily. I'll tell you, when I first when I first got my first talent agent out of California, I did a an odd this is what got me in. So my but I told you about Dan. Or, I'm sorry, Roger. So Roger has been represented by Dean out of California for many, 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 Federer? many years. Roger Federer. No, 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 close, close to the party, but he, uh, he, he's been with him for years, but anyway, so, he, uh, Roger calls me up. He, he took me under his wing. He's like, I know, I know you're going to a good place. You're, you're going to do good. He got a Domino's script, um, came across his email. Once you're on a roster, you'll get, you know, like emails. Mm-hmm. So he gets a thing for, for Domino's. Now, now Roger has been union for many years, SAG after. So, there are certain spots that are either union or non-union, right? So we're in a non-union, we're in a non-union state. So we could actually do either. So he knew that. So he sent it to me. He's like, you know what? I, you know, I'm confident in you do this read and send it over to Dean. So I did it. And I'm not going to toot my own horn, toot toot. I got a, um, and I'm relatively new in the game at that time. And I got a call from Roger probably a month after. And I auditioned and forget about it. Because another voiceover tip number two. When you put an audition in, I'll I save all my stuff on my server just for shits and giggles because I got a big server. But um, <laughs> thousands, Straight thousands, flex. thousands, thousands of auditions. And again, all, most of them are now. So the biggest tip I can give is when you do an audition, if you're going to get in the game, do an audition. Don't even think twice about it. This could be, you know, it's an awesome audition. I'm going to don't dwell on it. Move on because the one you start dwelling on, you never, you know. It's kind of that karma thing. Do it, forget about it, move on to the next one because you'll drive yourself that probably, crazy. That probably comes into the when you first start getting into it, though, mm. where your first two or three, that's all you have. And mm. so you want those. Sure. Our relator sure. took, you know, you get into trading stocks mm. and you have $5,000 and you mm. go in there and you find your first one or two or three stocks that you buy and they do shitty, <laughs> you, know, you lose money. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's, it's you, you can relate it to that where you want, you want it to hit all. Sure. And it's hard sure, that, to let true. go of that when, especially when you think you, you put it in, but It'll there's something to say about somebody being new and people are going to mm-hmm. put you a peg or two below because you're new because they don't know who you are and they're going to critique sure. everything you do versus somebody that's had a couple gigs and mm-hmm. oh man this guy's done this guy's done geico and this guy's done yeah. you know this or that they're going to be like all right this, there's something behind it let's give this a little bit longer listen yeah. do they listen to just audio or they do they ever look at a picture or video Uh, for voice acting, I haven't, I mean, I'll do like, I'll post on my webpage, uh, animations and stuff, finished stuff. But I, when I'm auditioning, it's just, vo- it's just voices is what they're listening. So to in, if you're not auditioning in person, which ain't happening, yeah, they're not right, right. seeing you because you think about it, right? You're being an actor. There's mm-hmm. a visual aspect. And what's to say that you're auditioning for, chevrolet and you look like me a homeless overweight 42 year old you're putting it and those guys are like oh my god his voice is great until i saw what he looked at looked like you know you would think that there's there could be some kind of visual aspect that make people not like your voice once they see it like you're ugly. Let's be real. That's, that's not. <laughs> listen, I I appreciate your honesty. It, it's it's um it's hurtful well, and it's hateful. And I'll probably lose sleep you. I mean, you're <laughs> ugly. You're ugly. I'm going to be honest. You're pretty ugly. I wouldn't. I would hug you, but I wouldn't kiss you. <laughs> <Jesus>. <laughs> um, no, I think there's a lot to be said about that. I think you know, I, I there's people getting gigs because of their voice and not their, and that's a good thing. I mean, because you think about, sure. and the first thing that I think of for 
good or bad is that a Britain's Got Talent or whatever with that female. And I can't remember her name, but she was, she's not a, a <laughs> she's not a good looking woman, but when she sang, it, you know, knocked the mm -hmm. uh, Simon Cowell's, you know, knocked him off his chair. So, I mean, I think you still, you do get that kind of aspect where you, it, it's a, a better advantage. You know, if you've got a good voice, you can let that do the marketing and not your, not what you look like. So thank God I, I can do that because I, I am ugly. Yeah. Well, you're not yeah. ugly, but you ain't pretty. Fugly? No, no, huh? no. Huh? I don't I'll know. I'll think about something later. Right now, okay. I have a question in my mind. I don't want to ask you. When it, <laughs> I thought you were about to spit your drink out. No, no, no. <laughs> I've got too much expensive equipment. I got to pay for. Can't. Can't. <laughs> a lot not of Apple. only. Not only do I have a four thousand dollar computer in front of me, I'm also drinking a six hundred dollar bottle of bourbon. So I can't I can't spit it out for numerous reasons. Six hundred fifty dollars. Oh my god. See, I'm geez. kidding. I'm kidding. Look, y'all. Look, this is why I had the voice athlete on because this man's swimming in money. He has his own studio. He has a studio money. within a studio. He's got a speakeasy. They got goats, chickens, raised gardens, a fire pit. No chickens. I can't claim the chickens. We have, we have plenty of neighbors with chickens and ducks and, and all that good stuff. But yeah, they, no they chickens. all chickens. So look, when when you know your neighbors by first name, their kids are your kids. I, they chickens, your chicken. We haven't bought eggs in three years. I will say that. There you go. See, and that's, look, that's right thing. now, you are making half. A living off of getting just three eggs. eggs right now. Yeah, that's way above. Back my, to the money remember. side. So yes. we kind of talked about the 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 book side of it, the audio book side of it. What what kind of money are you making? If you can put it put it like this in a per hour aspect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's tough. I, I I know it's tough, and it would be tough any other way. I mean. Without you showing us a spreadsheet of what you did, but just in general, if you can give a general synopsis of, you know, kind of an hourly rate of what it looked like to do what you're doing, let's just say at bare minimum, you need $3,000 to get into this business to record, edit, and do a demo, do an audition. Mm -hmm. Good point. Good point. With what the demo. kind of money are we looking at when you get that first job? And it's a let's say it's all averages, right? Everything's average. What's mm -hmm. what's it look like on that average price? I'd love to tell you I make you know three thousand dollars an hour as a as a voice actor. I don't. You know, it, it's so hard to answer that because let me put it this way. So. I was fortunate, you know, I've got a sound booth. A lot of people don't have that. That is a very, um, I th I'm not going to say essential because I didn't start with that, but it is a very um, important piece of equipment. Your microphones are very important. Um, well, let's not be, let's be serious. Your, your voice is the most important when you're going to need a voice acting. I started with a USB mic. I can't remember what it was. Mm -hmm. um, I would say if you're doing the voice acting stuff, you definitely want to get it, uh, an XM, you know, the, not, not the, the XLR. USB. Yeah, well, XLR. Yeah, yeah, XLR. But yeah, so I, you know, I was just, I, I can't put it into hourly. I can't put it into because it's it's all gonna it literally is what you put into it, what you want to put into it. And that's for me at right now and for the last three, four years, it's for me, it's a part-time gig. It's and I'm I'm so fortunate with my regular job that I'm flexible. So I can do this. You know, voiceover is nice because you can do it at three in the three in the morning. You know, whenever you have time, you can do it. You can send auditions. Going back to money. So I say when my first year I started, I probably invested 5,000, just a rough number. I would mm -hmm. say around 5,000. That was for all my equipment. Again, I go, I go all in, I'm all in. Um, but that's, but, you know, knowing for me, knowing what you have, at least what you've mm -hmm. posted and stuff that you've done, mm -hmm. 5,000, that seems like, that seems like reasonable. I'm like, shit, I could, it's not, I could, it's not, I could maybe swing yeah, it's that. Not a, it's yeah. not a whole bunch. It's not a bunch. It also and, and, says, also says that when somebody says when they're doing voice acting, they're getting into it, they spend 5K. 
like I'm like, well, damn it, that's reasonable. What what does yeah. <laughs> what do, what does it look like if I want to be unreasonable and go well, all I, out? Uh, I can say just to put it simple, I spent about five thousand for equipment, and of course, I hmm. over the years I've I put a lot more in, but first year probably five thousand got me to where I needed to be to be to 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 get into it. Mm-hmm. And I think that first year, or just the second year, I made that back. So that's the way I, I mean, I, you know, I'm, I'm not in it to make a trillion dollars. You know, I would love to quit my full-time job and do this full-time. It's just not where I'm at. I'm having fun doing it. So you um, invested so it, oh, one and you got that return on investment. At so 100%. my ROI that first year, yeah. second year was, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. So, I mean, well, so now everything's second, that's a big up. one. Was it a year or was it two years? Cause <laughs> That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. Because, well, well, you know, I, I'd say throughout the year I spent 5K. So, I, don't, okay. I mean, I didn't start January 1st. I didn't spend 5K. And, you know, it could have been. Yeah. You know. What out of that 5K, how did what did the breakdown in general, what the breakdown look like for equipment? What was mm-hmm. what? Let's say you had five buckets. So a thousand dollars or five buckets each. Mm-hmm. Which, which what equipment was most important at the top down to the bottom? Okay. So your computer, I've got a la- uh, laptop like a, a com- or a computer. I shouldn't say laptop computer, a good laptop. I've got, I've got a, la- a MacBook pro. That's, that's what I use. That was 2,500 bucks. Um, half your budget um, went to half the budget, the, but it's so uh, important. Uh, you know, hardware. Space and, yes. Yeah. Um, and then there's some other hardware. There's your, um, your board and your mic. Um, a good mic is, is, is completely relative. You know, there's a couple stand, uh, industry standards that, that people have and go to, but again, voices are different. So voice mics affect voices different on different mm. voices. So I mean, some, you know, I, I've went through a couple different mics that didn't sound good with my voice. So I, I, I got mm. rid of them. Uh, Neumann uh, TLM 103 is one of the first big expensive mm-hmm. mics that i got and it's a condenser mic but it's i don't know it's mm-hmm. omnidirectional whatever how they describe it but it just didn't sound i don't think it sounded right for my voice um so i right. tested it i tried it for a year and i didn't like it so i went over to the sure um which is a solid a solid mic i did a lot of audiobook or not a lot i did a few of my audiobooks on this and i do i do podcasts now on this on this mic yeah. um but um i went over to a sennheiser shotgun mic um, which I kind of use for everything. It's a catch-all, and it's great for my voice. I think you said the board. What is the board, and what so is it? Need, so, so yeah, when so I don't have a board probably like you, and um, I've, I use Apollo, an Apollo Solo, but it's basically so when you when you talk into your mic, it has to get the information and the and the the vocals and the voice to the computer, so it goes has to go through a board. You can't just unfortunately plug a XLR cable from your mic into a computer. So when you, so the board is basically doing a, a bunch of stuff, but it's, it's, it's basically converting that signal into a computer form that you can uh, either, you know, record or save or do whatever, send out. So the v- many different kinds of uh, systems. Again, I, I choose Apollo solo that works for me. Um, um, I, you know, I think it, it depends on what you're doing. So for podcast, I think, and I call it a board. It's actually an audio interface is, you know, AI is what I use you. And, and I know there are, and I can't remember the product that is, but it's got a bunch of buttons and they, they light up. I don't know what your board looks like, but, um, but yeah, so I, I you know, I, I could call it, a, I say board, but it may be a right, little different, right, but yeah, right. audio Mix interface and board, is what board, whatever it is. Yeah. We know. It's sound, basically on the computer. What they say is you always want to get the best equipment you can afford. I mean, you don't want to go crazy because mm. a lot of times, you know, your voice is going to sell it. But, you know, get what you get the best that you can because it, it's going to be worth it. Um, Apollo is very popular. That's there's a couple different kinds of different kinds of um, models. But the Apollo Solo is what I use and I've been successful with it. Um, you know, again, as far as mics, I've got the Sennheiser for here and I've got the uh, the um, MKH 416 shotgun mic. In, in the booth, but going back to money. So a laptop is, is key or, or my, uh, you know, I've got a Mac mini too. I mean, I use them both, but a, a good solid, um, a good solid, uh, computer is going to be key with storage. Um, you know, I use it. I have got an iPad 
tablet that I use, I use that for copy and reading. I mean, that's kind of unnecessary, but editing software is also going to be important. Um, I use Logic Pro. Um, I've kind of got onto that. I was using some free stuff in the past, but um, I just, I kind of, I kind of fell into the Logic Pro category and liked it. Um, but as, again, going back to money, I know I'm going off the thing. Um, good computer, good microphone. And one of the top things, if you don't have a sound booth, which a lot of people don't, and that's fine, you need to get sound treatment for your whatever space you're using. If you don't have a booth, and if you're, if you're going to be doing of you know voice acting, you've got to you've got to treat your your studio or whatever. And a lot of people use closets. That's fine. That's actually a really good, you know, it's probably one of the best. And a lot of people do it. It's one of the cheapest and easiest things to do if you want to get right into voice acting. You don't have to do anything. You literally pull, go into your closet, leave Close. the clothes in there, leave yep. them in there. Yeah, move them over, get behind it, mm-hmm. and just and 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 do your thing. So a lot of people do that. But if you were going to spend money, if you're going to spend mm-hmm. five hundred dollars, give or take, give or take a hundred or two. But if you're going to spend five hundred dollars, I would say, and you tell me if I'm right or wrong on your opinion. Mm-hmm. I would say the microphone is the first place I'd spend that 500. To me, honestly, it's, you know, I think it's going to go between sound treatment and, and microphone. I think if you could oh, split shit. it and do yeah, sound yeah. treatment is that important. It comes, wow. I, I yeah. Paul, I, I told you, I thought I've got thousands of auditions going back to my very first one. Mm-hmm. And I listened back to when I didn't have this and I had, I was in this office in this area and I bought, at first, I bought some sound to a crate, and then I went to a sound mm-hmm. curtain that helped a mm-hmm. little bit. But when I listened to my first um, audition, I cringe. I'm like, oh, my God, you sounded like pure tea shit. The first and foremost thing I would say from the podcast platform is that microphone. And to hear you say to spend some money on the, the soundproofing, huh, that's interesting. But you're the professional. Well, I'm not. <laughs> uh, Look, yeah, so you I'm, get paid. You get paid to talk into that microphone. S- I ain't been is- paid a penny yet. <laughs> <laughs> it, it'll come. It'll come in time. But yeah, sound treatment is, is key. Well, That's you know, funny. this is this has been it's been fun because when you hear those voices on the radio. When you hear those voices on a commercial on TV, but you don't see the person, there's a real person behind that. And it might be Scott Bilski <laughs> right up just the road maybe. who you're listening to here now. Just maybe. Yeah. And what you're saying is, is that this is, is all right. Last, last kind of, question or topic we'll dive into before we end this is this right now an industry that you can grow into or is it saturated after covid it's it's a twofold question it's completely saturated after covid but it's definitely something if you put the time and effort it's definitely something you can flourish into what do what time and effort do I need to focus in to be able to make this? Is it connecting to agents? Is it connecting to uh, companies? Like what time and effort? Because Good if you're going to do question. this, you already you already think you have a voice, and you thinking that means that you're going to profess it. What does the time and effort need to be put into? Does it need to be put into the networking? Or does it need to be put into the technical aspects of talking? The technical, the, the, the technical aspect of it and to, the talking into a mic is probably the smallest part of your day. If you're, if you're doing this full time, that is My a man. small part of your day. Direct marketing, cold calling, calling clients, trying to get on rosters, calling casting. I mean, I, honestly, I, I talked, I've got a lot of friends locally that are doing this full time. They've quit their full time jobs. They have dedicated it to voice acting and voiceover. What? And they, I swear, I've, I've got a couple of good friends in Raleigh and they, and God bless them, but they constantly, they spend out of probably 10 hours in a day, they probably spend eight or nine hours 
cold calling and marketing and sending out emails, just blanket emails, honestly. So the, the, the voice acting part is very small. Look, man, this is it. awesome. It, if y'all have ever wondered what it's like to be a voice actor, we gave you some tidbits in here and entertainingly educational amongst a lot of other stuff. But this is what this podcast is. You want to get if you if you know, you get the, the the person you came here to to learn about, we're gonna get a lot of other stuff added in. Bisk, you guys ain't leaving words for the good listeners, the entertainingly education. If you're interested in doing it, just get used to saying or hearing no uh, and, and be perseverant. Keep doing what you're doing and uh and you'll make it if you want to make it. That's it's 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 as simple as that. Truthfully. Is goat milk better than cow milk? No. Don't tell Marissa I said that. <laughs> this is not this is not how I thought we were ending. I thought we were ending on yes, and I was gonna end it, but I'm not even gonna lie. But no, we're my, ending on cow milk is better than goat milk. Not don't awful. tell my wife, who's a goat Let, herder. I will tell you something. It does make the best soap in the world, and that's all I use. So I will say that. But I did to, is, to drink is it. It's cow terrible. milk cheese or goat milk cheese better. It depends. That's going to be something. I mean, I, it's not my favorite goat milk cheese, but I I do like it. Chev. She does make Chev a lot, and it's good. It's not for everyone. It's it's very. You know uh, what? Goaty. You know we're supposed to give me Chev a lot. The last time that I was at your house. And I'll mail it to you it like a hundred times that we have. Um, we haven't. I'll make sure I'm going to, we'll mail you a batch, but you, you just be careful. USBS takes a while. Could get to you in a couple <laughs> weeks. So just look, do look, a, look. I'd say do a sniff test, but it's going to smell shitty anyway. <laughs> hold, hold on here. <laughs> cheese. That's the great yes. thing about cheese. Yes. Fresh cheese turns into blue cheese. Which if I it love. ain't eaten early enough. Does or it, gorgonzola. Feta. Feta. Well, feta mm -hmm. doesn't have the pungency of a gorgonzola. True. Or the blue stuff. Or the it. blue cheese, yeah. yeah. The mold. What would it be like to be a voice actor slash athlete with Scott Bilski? Scott, send us out, Hawks, with some good words of wisdom. Uh, all I've got is I really appreciate you having me on here, Paul. Uh, we've been friends for a while, and and I hope I answered some, at least some of the questions. I know we had some fun. Um, it was an honor to be on. It was an honor to be one of your guests. And if there's anything I can ever do, obviously, give me a call. And if there's anything the listeners need or have any questions, please let me know. I'd be more than happy to help out, okay?